documentary. Uh, have you heard of Autism in Love? I have not. It? I wouldn't say like changed my life, but it definitely gave, you a gave me a comfort in myself. Despite, because I was never told that I had this ability. Obviously, I'm very, very capable. But watching a documentary about people who have it and relating to them a hundred percent of the time, I'm just like, whoa. My wife has tiny autistic symptoms. But high functioning, we survived just fine. We're the lucky ones because we have that acuity. For whatever interests us, we can figure it out. Yeah, like she understands human. It's a gift. I know. I hope she knows that. It's a scary gift when you realize because it's a little different than what you were taught. But realizing that it's not a bad thing, it's a thing you can hone in on. I think that she, I think that she definitely understands that. Um, yeah, good. I don't know if I've ever expressed that that's something. Actually, no, I have expressed that something about her that I appreciate because I think the reason that she and I get on so well is because of my relationship with my father and my brother. Yeah. Because I can understand how to give people an understanding space yes. and not take offense when that's yes. like, like my, my wife is very vocal about needing her space and that's critical. See, I, I come from a family yeah, where we all would go to our rooms and check. Like, we're happy to be within ourselves. Like, we're very self-reliant. But of course, like, there's love and support whenever you need it. We're here. It's just, my mom is very much the, the kind of oppressive socialization. Like, she can't handle... Just overall. Yeah. One of the things that I think <laughs> makes us in friendship is the ability to share space. Yes. Like, comfort. Yeah. Being able to talk like this, very good. Being able to just hang out. You want to know? The, okay, so I, so I did like the Bali thing. It was like, <laughs> that was like, I know there's got to be something the better. place that I went to, they weren't super yoga focused. They were mostly meditation focused. And my dream and goal is to make it to the weekly silent. Nobody, if you use words, you get asked to leave. <laughs> Honestly, we took it to the max. That's like my dream. I'm like... I don't fucking fight you. <laughs> I feel, yeah, I'm like, I feel um, it, within my soul that I like, am like, ready for that. But it's, it's, I know it's like a, a timing thing of all of the pieces because right now like my outside life would not allow me to enjoy it the way I want to. But to be able to like completely detach and they tell you that you form the most intense relationship, like the deepest relationships, and it's amazing that you do it. Losing an entire skill that you think you won't because you have develop. to focus on your other communication. <laughs> Back to the earlier convo. The, the whole, um, like, deaf, the eye sign, contact. Sign language and, yes. and music as a form of communication. Um, and physical affection. Like, yes. The 20 second hug. It's, it's I also wonder, I'm not totally sure, so I'd love to know what Max says about it, but I think writing. I think because if you can still use a pen, you might be silent, but verbal in that way, and it's, people are less likely to write something down that they're not proud of, yeah. and people are quick to verbalize things that they like instantly go like, like wait what? Or they go later on, they're like, oh yeah, that was a little heated in the moment. I was feeling a certain way, but like when you're actually taking the time to put it down, you're you're more. Uh, Careful and you know thoughtful. And I, I often prefer to handle serious kind of things. Yeah, that's so, so in a distance relationship, that has been a big thing where we get in verbal things that I'm just like literally no progress is going to be made. So it's like a hang up. Write it down. I'm trying to write as you're calling me. Like, and it's like what we need to say things both of us. Process. Process. And not, you don't have to listen so close because listening is harder than just like looking and being able to. Like, Especially for people who are cognizant of their own choices. 
That's where we started putting definitions constantly because we're just like, dude, you're using that in It's like, um, actually... Are, are people, the air, yeah, most problems are just miscommunication. Like, most of the time, it's I said something that didn't translate. She, right. Like, it didn't translate right in your mind. Like, for whatever reason, maybe what I said wasn't and there. And some of the like, things, we'll look it up and... He'll be referring to the first de definition, but I've only known the second one. Sure. So and then you're like, like well, what? Things are really but, but people, you know what? My favorite thing right now to pick up on is that words. Almost everyone that I've noticed or paid attention to, you can use the word positively or negatively. Just change your tone. Right. Okay. You can make something sound really bad and good in a very quick difference of tone. Yeah. People have an affinity for negative tones. People want to complain. They want to say this is shit and like get their angry because the system's fucked. But it's like, but, it's like, but you can't soak in that mentality. Just because, okay, just because the system is fucked and needs to be changed does not mean that that gives you an excuse to be a shitty person. Or to like remind everybody of it constantly. Like, yeah, we all know it's fucked. Like, come on. <laughs> like, let's try to pretend that that's not the because that was... I like to try and post like positive things going on. Like I found out recently, Lego is actually doing some really cool shit. Like one, they are working on a completely renewable source of plastic for their Legos. They have a, a prototype of it, and it's probably going to be in market soon. So renewable Legos. And secondly, they're making bricks that have the Braille alphabet, so blind kids can learn earlier. Yeah.